In order to complete the project task, the Longhorn Liberators divided our efforts into three main functional groups. Two robots were created, the Megabot and the Minibot. The third functional group worked on the hardware and software, which is essentially identical on both robots. The Megabot was the first robot designed. Here is the Alpha Prototype. From the Alpha Prototype, the team learned that we need flanges to keep the treads on. We also learned that a rigid structure was necessary, the motors were oversized, and climbing stairs is a very difficult task. This is the team's first attempt at driving the Alpha Prototype around. It's attached to a power supply on the PVC pipes you see there. This is the initial construction of the Beta Prototype, which has articulating treads on it to climb stairs. The sides and bottom are made of aluminum, and the top, front, and back are made of polycarbonate. DC motors are connected through spur gears to the faceplate of the articulating arm subassembly. Separate motors power the tread's forward motion. Here is the alpha prototype of the arm. We found that the servos were not powerful enough and the design was too complex. The second design was much simpler and also very easy to control. Improvements have been made in the Megabot tread design to enhance the stair climbing capability. This is the Minibot. By removing the robot's abilities to climb stairs and open doors, we were able to greatly decrease the size of the robot. We also used wheels instead of treads to minimize the noise made by the robot. It has a polycarbonate housing, and dichloromethane is used to fuse the polycarbonate together. To increase the stealth of the Minibot, we chose to give it a cover made out of carbon fiber. The Pico ITX is the heart of the robot hardware. This on-robot computer runs the Ubuntu Linux operating system. The whole robot is powered by a lithium polymer battery pack. The microcontroller gets commands from the Pico ITX, changes them into pulse widths, and sends those to the motor controller. The laser rangefinder is another important piece of hardware. It uses a laser beam to determine the distance to objects. These distances, along with the cumulative position of the robot, are sent to the Simultaneous Localization and Mapping Algorithm, also known as SLAM. An EPC-1000 is being used as the operator station. It sends commands from a USB game controller through a wireless network to the robot computer. It also receives the matrix of SLAM values and converts it to an image. Finally, a stream from the webcam onboard the robot can be seen on the operator computer. Many hours were spent in the machine shop creating the prototypes.
<laughs> oh, he's checking you out. <laughs> Hi, E. <laughs> Sequence activated. Three, two, one, zero.